What's up guys, Miles here with 9to5Mac, and if you're a fan of good ideas, be sure to subscribe to the channel for future content like this. Today we're gonna be taking another look at Mac Studio that was just revealed at Apple's March 8th event. This is a brand new Mac Mini Pro type device running the M1 Max chip and the brand new M1 Ultra chip, which is essentially two M1 Max chips glued together. Today we're gonna be looking at the M1 Max variant of Mac Studio and seeing how it stacks up against the MacBook Pro with M1 Max. These computers are running the same CPUs on paper, but there's definitely more to the story. The Mac Studio's design is very reminiscent of the Mac Mini, but obviously a lot taller and with a lot more I.O. It's under 8 inches wide and 3 inches tall, and take a look at the ports on the front. We've got two USB-C ports alongside a UHS-2 SD card slot, and this is something that I've always wanted from a pro Apple desktop, and I'm so glad that we've got it here. The MacBook Pro's design is pretty fresh as well as it just released last fall, so there are many aspects of this design that are similar to Mac Studio, like the smooth edges. And as you know, the MacBook Pro got substantially thicker with this redesign, but there are obviously a lot of functional benefits that you're getting from that. Both of these Macs designs serve very different purposes. Mac Studio is meant to be unobtrusive within an office or studio environment or a desk setup in general. While the MacBook Pro was designed to be used anywhere and everywhere with that mini LED display attached to it. So it's really up to you whether portability with a screen is more important than having a desk friendly design. Personally, I find it's better to have both if you can, but I find that the portability that you get with the MacBook Pro can't really be replicated by Mac Studio. Unlike the M1 Mac Mini that I compared to Mac Studio in yesterday's video, the port situation isn't quite that different between these two machines. As you can see right here, right on the face of the Mac Studio, you've got two USB-C ports alongside a UHS-2 card slot, and those two USB-C ports are Thunderbolt enabled when you opt for the M1 Ultra variant. And that makes this the only other machine besides the MacBook Pro that Apple sells brand new that comes with an SD card slot. And then on the back, you've got four Thunderbolt 4 ports alongside a 10 gigabit ethernet port as standard, two USB-A ports, an HDMI port, and of course, a headphone jack. The MacBook Pro is rocking three Thunderbolt 4 ports, a MagSafe charging port, an HDMI 2.0 port, and UHS-2 SD card slot alongside a headphone jack. So the portage on the MacBook Pro is quite nice for it being a portable package, but if you specifically need as many USB-C ports as you can get or native ethernet, then Mac Studio is definitely the better way to go. Now we get to the most interesting part of this comparison and that's the chips. The base Mac Studio is rocking the M1 Max chip that debuted in the MacBook Pros last fall. So it's got a 10 core CPU alongside a 24 core GPU. The MacBook Pro with M1 Max has identical specs and outside of the M1 Max chip performing slightly better in the 16 inch variant of the MacBook Pro, there's no on paper differences between the MacBook Pro's chip and the Mac Studio's M1 Max chip. But I do think the chassis and thermal setup that Mac Studio is using will allow it to slightly outperform the MacBook Pro in the most intensive workloads. And perhaps the difference won't be necessarily within the speed itself, but maybe certain use cases that would cause the MacBook Pro's fans to spin up will be less severe on Mac Studio, scenarios like that. So I think we can definitely expect slightly better performance out of Mac Studio compared to the MacBooks because of this. But if you wanna get the most power you can get in an Apple Silicon Mac in general, well, that's where the M1 Ultra chip comes into play. The M1 Ultra chip at its lowest end comes with a 20 core CPU with a 48 core GPU and 32 core neural engine. The M1 Ultra chip is essentially the M1 Max Duo chip that we've heard many rumors about over the past six months. And as described by Apple, M1 Ultra is essentially two M1 Max chips sandwiched together in a way that should perform significantly faster than your typical dual CPU setup, and especially faster than your standard M1 Max chip. And based off of the charts that Apple showed off in the keynote, and I definitely have to say you should take those graphics with a grain of salt, the performance this chip should offer in comparison to the M1 Max chip should be quite substantial and I'm looking forward to testing it out. But I don't even think we need to do that to recognize that Mac Studio with M1 Ultra is going to be your best bet for a workstation. Because the MacBook Pro and Mac Studio are running on the same M1 Max chip, the memory and storage situation are going to be identical. The M1 Max MacBook Pro and Mac Studio come with a minimum of 32 gigs of RAM, which should be plenty for the average power 
power user and the M1 Max chip can be specced all the way up to 64 gigs. And I'd say this is probably all you need for heavy usage. But if you wanna take it a step further, and when I say a step, I mean $2,200 further, you can equip the M1 Ultra chip, which then allows you to equip the 128 gigabyte of memory option. And I personally think this is overkill for a spec, but if you feel like you need it, then Apple will sell it to you. And just like the memory, both devices can be equipped with up to eight terabytes of storage. And I think that should be plenty for the average creative professional professional, especially given how much more affordable external solutions are. But it's definitely nice to be able to store a bunch of stuff within the computer you use. But for me, it's not $2,400 worth it. Mac Studio was announced alongside a brand new studio display. And essentially, this is the same panel used in the iMac 5K and the LG Ultrafine 5K monitor that's been stuffed into a new Apple-like enclosure. And they threw in a brand new center stage camera, new speakers, and an A13 chip, the processor from the iPhone 11 to handle it all. And so this is theoretically what you'd buy to use with Mac Studio if you followed Apple's instructions. But the problem is that it's gonna cost you an extra $1,600 or $2,000 just for height adjustability. So if you don't get the height adjustable stand, you're looking at a grand total of $3,600 if you pair this with a base model Mac Studio. The cheapest 14 inch MacBook Pro with M1 Max is $2,900 and the cheapest 16 inch MacBook Pro with M1 Max is $3,100. And the only real benefit the studio display has over the MacBook's display is the size. In nearly every metric besides resolution, the MacBook Pro's display is the most impressive panel offered in an Apple product, in my opinion. You've got a mini LED panel with ProMotion and crazy high brightness figures. It's truly a wonder to use. And while the studio display is nice, the panel itself isn't really touching the MacBook's display, if you ask me. And if all you care about within the studio display is that 5K panel, you can save yourself some money and cop an LG Ultrafine 5K for a little less. But I gotta say the pricing difference between Mac Studio plus the studio display versus a MacBook Pro with M1 Max isn't that huge. And for those who aren't display snobs like myself, it might be a pretty tough decision deciding between these two setups. Personally, I'd probably go with the MacBook Pro unless I already had a laptop, as the power in the Mac Studio compared to the MacBook Pro is gonna be pretty close. And the MacBook Pro is just so much more versatile, but I still plan on upgrading my Mac Mini with M1 to a Mac Studio. And for those who were expecting a brand new M2 MacBook Pro at this event, they might be scratching your head wondering, what's the deal? When is this laptop gonna show up? Because quite a lot of people early on were expecting at least one MacBook to show up at this event. Well, I think now that we've gotten the Mac Studio announcement and this event in general, it's quite clear what the path going forward is gonna be like for the rest of the year as far as their lineup. I think we're definitely gonna have an event in the fall where we could very likely see an M2 or a revamped M1 MacBook Air, a revamped M1 or M2 MacBook Pro, and then a revamped M2 or M1 Mac Mini, basically refreshing all of their baseline Apple Silicon devices, kind of doing like a sequel or copy of their original Apple Silicon announcement showing off all the new hardware. I think we're gonna get something like that. But if not, I definitely think we should be getting a lower end MacBook Pro sometime this year. We've just heard too much about it. But yeah, I think we should definitely expect a lower end MacBook Pro sometime this year, but more than likely towards the very tail end. But between these two setups, which one will you be ordering? And are you interested in Mac Studio at all? Let us know in the comment section down below and be sure to subscribe to the channel because of course we're gonna be giving Mac Studio the full review treatment and order should be arriving in the next 10 days. So that's pretty exciting stuff. All right, that's it. Talk to you guys in the next one.